Coming to you from under the sea. The horror. <laughs> it's the little podcast of horrors with James, Christina, and Chris. Hello. Hello. Yo. 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 Ho. Oh, Ho. Oh. And a bottle of rum. And a bottle of rum. Up, what are everybody? we drinking today? I'm drinking from a Three Nations Brewery, 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 which is in town nearby, which is dangerous. It's this uh this uh, beer called Devour, and it's a cream brulee imperial milk stout. Oh, that sounds delicious. It is. It's one of my new favorites for sure. I'm drinking lemon and lime flavored soda water, (laughs) also known as a Sprite. Oh, okay. So it's got a lot of sugar, too. (laughs) Just like me. (laughs) No, I I went worked out with Charlie and and we were doing crunches. And afterwards, Mm -hmm. my, my old man body was like... That's a great time to have a big dark beer. It was my stomach was like, oh, I didn't like that. And so I'm drinking a Sprite to kind of settle, uh, yeah. me, settle my, my middle-aged tummy. Your tum-tum. My little tum-tum. <clears throat> Quiet, soothe you now. Drink the lemon lime some water. <laughs> well, is, that, I... is that how you talked at the gym? Exactly. Like everybody gives me space when I'm there. I'm just like, that's right. Work legs, work middle aged little leggy legs. Push. He knows how to clear a room. <laughs> Push hard. Ah, that was lovely. Let's do it again. I feel so uncomfortable. <laughs> that's how, how they felt at- the ladies at the gym. That's how they felt at the Oof. gym. <laughs> gonna get banned probably you're like i'm just working out my little leggies <laughs> I, i'm sorry i'm just working out my little leg legs getting <laughs> my little clutes stiff and hard i don't mean to make you uncomfortable what are you drinking christina we've talked enough about moi uh Why, thank you for asking. I am drinking a Blue Wing from a local brewery called Flyway. And it's like, it's a berry wheat ale. It tastes like blueberry flavored. It's really good. Schnozberries taste like schnozberries. Schnozberries. That's why I'm turning purple. You can see my skin mm. for so those I, of you watching. <laughs> I just thought you're turning this lovely pink shade, just like, <laughs> like a rose, pink flame. For those of you that can see with your ears. <laughs> that sounds like another, that sounds like a horror movie. They see with their ears. That sounds like a superpower. Is it really All right. a horror movie or just awkward? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, I have the story today, so cut the the chit chat. Let's get to it. Cut the chitty chat, chitter chat. Let's get this party started. Throw us down your serious, solemn topic. Yes, it's very serious, very sad. Brace yourselves. What? Get in a Snuggie, like get some hot tea, a lot of tissues. Get that Snug Snug. Yep, because today we're talking about mermaid sightings. <laughs> well, okay. Ball. <laughs> Who's got their Disney singing voices ready? Because she's a mother flipping mermaid. <laughs> mermaid. <laughs> Thank God your mother didn't live long enough to see her son become a mermaid. So these mythological creatures obviously need 
no real introduction. Everybody knows what the fuck they are. <laughs> they're fish uh, ladies. They're fish ladies. They're fishmen. Um, they are like throughout pretty much all cultures throughout time. So they really are dug into our collective consciousness as human beings. There were potentially cave drawings of mermaids 30,000 years ago, potentially. They're, they're not really sure. But if you see the pictures, they kind of do look like mermaids. <laughs> are they just really crappy drawings of mermaids? <laughs> like, this could really be anything. Let's go That's with mermaids. Better than I can do. So I don't know. <laughs> I should have pulled a picture. I'll pull a picture and try to put it on our Instagram. Um, anyway, so they've been around in our brains forever. People have been seeing these things forever. Blackbeard has warned his crewmates about avoiding certain enchanted waters to avoid Black mermaids. He's yep. like afraid of nothing. Yeah. The dude literally had a smoking beard. <laughs> Yeah, and he was afraid of mermaids. Yeah. Afraid of mermaids. Blackbeard's Chris... like, I'll fight any sons of bitches, but you keep them fish people away from me. <laughs> Captain, Captain Hook had his crocodile. Blackbeard had mermaids. <laughs> he had Ariel. That, that was yep. his terror. When that redhead showed up, he was just getting some gone. Yep. So... You know, there's a lot of lore behind mermaids. We're really not going to be talking a lot about that today. <laughs> I'm going to be diving into reading some crazy sightings, some wild sightings. Okay. Um, but yeah, Homer wrote about them in the Odyssey. Uh, no. Christopher Columbus reported seeing mermaids, said they were real ugly, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Why is that? Because it's like, if it's Christopher Columbus, he's like... I can't bang that and I can't enslave that. So I'm not interested. Yeah. Like piece of crap. Also probably just didn't know what a manatee looked like. That's so, what yeah. I think that his sightings didn't were. didn't know what America looked like. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So. I would have loved. There's... I would have just loved. Chris. I'm sorry. I just would have loved Christopher okay. Columbus trying to hit on a manatee. Not realizing. <laughs> not a mermaid. Be like. Well, your pulpous face is a bit ungodly, but I've never done it with a mythological creature before. And the natives over there are like, does that dumbass know that that's just a manatee? Nah, just let him go. <laughs> this is funny. As a douche, anyway. He's like, I've been so lonely on the seas. <laughs> I'm so lonely. Let me feel your, your pulpous, gelatin, squishy tummy against mine. There's that a... Poor Adjectives I never want to hear in that order ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Poor manatee. All right. Well, there's no real evidence. Okay. But there are some really cool sightings. So let's get into them. The first one we're going to start out with is um, out of the key islands in Indonesia. So I got this from a website. Well, this is really on a bunch of websites, but the main one that I was really looking at for this piece was listfirst.com. So they they did, I, I like the title of the article. It's 10 totally reliable, in parentheses mostly, uh, sane people who have seen a mermaid. And this is by Ward Hazel. So Ward Hazel, shout out to you. All right. So your investigative journalism. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So picture it, the Key Islands, Indonesia. The year is 1943. The Japanese have set up shop on the island for surveillance purposes. So soldiers kind of wandering about doing soldier things. I don't know, shooting guns, doing push-ups. I don't know what soldiers do, but doing soldier stuff. Okay? That is exactly so what they do. <laughs> nothing yeah. else. It's just all day, every day, shooting guns, and doing push-ups. <laughs> They're like working out on the beach. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, you've seen Top Gun. Yeah. See? They do their sweaty shirtless volleyball. And I know, right? It's just like, I love it. I know all about soldiers, obviously. <laughs> we know soldiers. <laughs> all right. So the soldiers are going about their business when they 
come upon a lagoon and they spot a really bizarre creature in the waters. They get a little closer. The creature jumps out of the water and it lets out this this crazy noise that sounds like a cross between like a gargling and like a, a burp. Can you recreate that noise for us? <laughs> nice. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. I nailed that. <laughs> that was beautiful. I <laughs> need I need a video of Ariel <laughs> making that noise. She's coming yeah. out of the water, hair, hair, hair flowing slow motion, and just that majestic noise comes out. <laughs> See, all I'm seeing is these like muscly, shirtless 1940s soldiers coming across old Greg. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing. Like old Greg just hops out and just be like, I'm old Greg. You ever drank Bailey's from a shoe? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they come upon old Greg in the lagoon, and they're like, what the fuck is this? So (laughs) this is how they describe it. (laughs) (laughs) This is how they describe old Greg, mermaid. So it was less than five feet long. It has pink skin. It has spikes on its shoulders, uh, neck, and spine. Dude, that's metal. Yeah. Mermaids are metal. Yeah, this one is crazy sounding. It, it has thrashing. a human... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. What? I was, I was just going to say, she, it was thrashing on a guitar. <laughs> it had a microphone. It was just screaming this horrific... This... It's basically, Ariel's a member of Deathlock now. <laughs> so... It does have a humanoid face with arms, like it looked like little tiny human arms, and its oh. mouth though its mouth resembled a carp's. So like the fish. Wait, wait, <laughs> when wait, you wait, said wait, it was wait, thrashing, wait. I was imagining like that carp fish mouth going up and down. So so little <laughs> tiny human arms. So it's like a T Rex with human arms. <laughs> it's like a well, like I don't think they're mouth. that tiny, but you got like noodle arms. This but, thing doesn't deserve to live. It needs to be put out of its misery. It's just coming out of the water going, kill me. <laughs> that was what the burp was. Yes. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Aww. Aww. Okay. So I I say tiny arms, but I mean more like thin. I, I think they're like lo- longer arms. It, it can probably crawl out <laughs> and grab you. <laughs> And clap its hands. Okay. Oh. But they were like skinny little arms. But okay. So they see this. It's got a carp mouth, but like a humanoid face. Otherwise, the soldiers freak out and start just start shooting. <laughs> oh my God. I was going to joke about like they just opened fire. Like, what is that? I don't know. Kid. <laughs> they really did. <laughs> uh it gets away they they miss uh, I, it seems like panic shooting <laughs> like star stormtrooper panic shooting i was about to say uh, bill what the hell you're like you're shooting off to the right what are you even doing i'm just panicking <laughs> i don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it jumps into the water gets away all right so the soldiers are they go back they're talking to the locals and they're like you know, telling them about this crazy creature they found. And the locals are like, oh yeah, that's good old Orang Ikan. <laughs> we see them all the time. And <laughs> like, that's the name of our new metal band. <laughs> the Orang Ikan. Orangicon. Yeah, they're With like, this is a normal mermaids. this metal is a normal mermaids. Tuesday for us. <laughs> Orangicon, Metal Mermaids. Let me be a part of your world. Yes. <laughs> so Oranga Khan means manfish. Just FYI. It does have a meaning. Man like fish. a, it's a man like fish. a mer- it's man it's fish. A, a man fish. It's man fish. It's my deadly enemy. <laughs> man fish. So the locals are like, we see these guys all the time. Like we even frequently catch them. They get caught in our nets, you know. So the sightings continue. 
Um, they see them around the lagoons, but they also see them on the beach kind of congregating sometimes. So they're, they're seeing them quite a bit. And these sightings have really got the interest of the general. So he goes and he asks the locals if like next time they pull one in in their nets, if they'll, you know, let him know so he can see it, you know. So the day comes, someone has caught one in their net. He goes into the village. People are kind of congregating around it. <clears throat> um, And so... He books it. He sees this strange mermaid. He describes it pretty much the same as the soldiers described it, right? Like humanoid fish, but a fish mouth, like a carp mouth with spikes on it, pink skin. I'm like, dang it. If only one of us had a camera ready for this <laughs> yeah. grand interaction. <laughs> exactly. I will simply describe it down in my journal after the fact. One of our band's songs has to be something like Murmur or something. Murmurder. <laughs> they put the mer. The mermaids put the mer in murder. <laughs> mermaids putting the mer in murder. <laughs> Manfish. <laughs> 2000 BC. Um, so, Chris. It's funny that you said that, though, because one of the articles that I did read, um, I don't remember if it was the one uh, Word Hazel here did, but um, one of them did mention something like that, like, too bad they didn't have, the the general didn't think to bring a camera, <laughs> take a picture. Right. <laughs> okay, so... It freaks him out, but it also is really intriguing to him. And after World War II ends, he tries desperately to get zoologists to go to these islands to investigate these creatures. Of course, nothing happens because we we don't have any evidence of mermaids. <laughs> so I don't We're know, exactly Sam. That, you know, <laughs> we might be more inclined to believe you if, I don't know, you took a damn picture. <laughs> Well, in this day and age, we wouldn't. <laughs> We're always like, none of our pictures can be trusted. Did, did and that's like, it'll what just be a, a selfie blocking the mermaid. Mm -hmm. Did you see mm -hmm. that gurgling carp head? Do you really want a picture of that? <laughs> Do you really <laughs> want to have that captured and filmed forever? Why does this look like Nicolas Cage? I want to see him. <laughs> It's just like Nicolas Cage's head. He just, oh my God. The Little Mermaid story, <laughs> Nicolas Cage. I am here for it. He's I got, would definitely go see that. But it's just that face from face off that he does where he's just like, oh, oh. yes. <laughs> All right. So the next couple stories, I'm pretty much going to just read from the website. Okay. So I got these next three. They're kind of short, but. The next three from the website, everythingmermaid.com. Um, Source for everything mermaid <laughs> and mermaid accessories. All your mermaid, mermaid wants can be fulfilled here. That's it's really right. Hard. It's really hard, I'm realizing, to say like mermaid a lot. Like the longer mm -hmm. you chain, the yeah. many times you say mermaid, the more tongue twisted you get. Try it at home record yourselves and then send it to us so we can hear it now what you should send us is your is your photoshops of metal mermaid <laughs> yes metal that mermaids much more interesting well i want sounds to go with it though so also do you like a sound with it yes <laughs> all right so these came from everythingmermaid.com her article mermaid sightings um the writer of the article, I, I didn't get her last name, but her name is Molly and she owns the website. So it, the whole thing is hers. <laughs> so Molly, this is Molly Molly's the mermaid words, mistress. not mine. I was about to say. Molly the mermaid mistress. Yes. It's, it's Molly the mermaid. <laughs> mistress. <laughs> mistress. Okay. So this one, these are Molly's words, not mine. Okay. So I'm not taking credit for molly's work here all right please don't so, us molly the mermaid mistress yeah please don't you did a great job i'm just <laughs> i'm just reading <laughs> out loud <laughs> okay so 
Shlomo Yitzchaki. I'm so sorry if I've mispronounced that. <laughs> That's Shlomo? not her words. Those are mine. <laughs> Okay, Is the Shlomo. Named Shlomo? No, okay, so that's just the start. Shlomo Yitzchaki is a rabbi between the years of 1040 to 1105 AD and describes mermaids in the Talmud. And I chose oh. this one for you, James, because you mentioned the Talmud not long ago, today, yesterday. I don't know. All right, so describes mermaids in the Talmud, which is an ancient Jewish book of law and legend. He writes, there are fish in the sea with which half is the form of man and half in the form of a fish called siren in Old French. Moshav Zekinim, a later rabbi, comments on this phrase by saying, this refers to the creature in the sea, which is similar in part to a person from the navel upwards, and it is similar to a woman in all aspects, in that it has breasts and long hair like that of a woman, and from the navel downwards, it is a fish. It also mentions that these mermaids sing beautifully and have a pleasant voice, which is like one of the common themes, right? Like the siren, this is kind of like a siren archetype they're describing here. Oh, yeah, yeah, as we heard earlier. <laughs> yeah, the just, just, the one in the Indonesia did not, was definitely a siren archetype. <laughs> <laughs> what is this carpet? <laughs> Okay, that was just a short blurb, but uh, the next one is a little bit longer. So this next one's going to be like a school teacher's account. So, okay, again, Molly's words here, not mine. William was a school teacher off the shore, off the coast of Northern England, who discovered a mermaid combing her hair near the shore. Uh, oh, and this is in 1797. Sorry, I didn't say the date. <clears throat> Why would you comb your hair if you're just going back into the water anyway? I don't know, man. Maybe maybe she's got some seaweed in there. You know, she's like, why do you got to work out the tangles? Why do you have hair? Because you got to be the sexy mermaid. <laughs> the sexy mermaid unless you're a Sigourney Weaver mermaid. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole different, you know, other animal. You got to flip that hair out when you jump out of the water. Uh, Plus, if it's like a PG movie, then the hair covers your breasts because obviously you mm -hmm. don't have clamshell mm -hmm. covering them. So, I think I like the spikes. <laughs> yeah, I'm here <laughs> for spiky mermaid. Metal Ariel. Okay, so William Monroe. Okay, so his account writes. Oh, this is long. Maybe I should. Okay, anyway, never mind. I won't say that out loud. All right. <laughs> Not saying that. Oh shit! Oh my god! I'm not saying that. Dang oh no! Am I thinking out loud again? Did I say that inside or outside my head? Are people looking at me weird? What's happening? <laughs> okay, so William Monroe writes <clears throat> about twelve years ago when I was. No, 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 you have to do it in a British accent. <laughs> oh, okay. I was just saying, British like... accent is so bad. About twelve years ago. When I was parochial schoolmaster at Ray, in the course of my walking on the shore, shore of Sandside, Sandside Bay, Bay, being a fine warm day in summer, I was induced to extend my walk towards Sandside Heat, when my attention was arrested by the appearance of a figure resembling an unclothed human, human female. female. <laughs> I mean, it's going to just... take forever. I have to read it normally. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I just love the fact that she goes, Ewan! Because we don't pronounce our H's. Be like, hello. Ewan. Anky banky. A bitch. <laughs> you want some fish and chips? I did my oh, best. <laughs> you did amazing. I was dying. I could not even. Oh my God, it uh, hurt. I can't wait till my British friend hears this. He's gonna be oh my god, I'm so wow. sorry to him. <laughs> oh no, we do this to him all the time. All right, so picking up where I left off in a normal voice. Uh -huh. Sitting upon a rock extending into the sea and apparently in the action of combing its hair, which flowed around its shoulders and of a light brown color. The resemblance which the figure bore to its prototype in all its visible parts was so striking that had not the rock on which it was sitting been dangerous for bathing, I would have been constrained to have regarded it as really an 
a human form, an human form, <laughs> and to an eye unaccustomed to the situation, it must have undoubtedly appeared as such. The head was covered with hair of the color above mentioned and shaded was on the crown. Head though with hair, because <laughs> man, it's not, it, it's not so far like a a lady. So. Okay, the head was covered with hair of the color above mentioned and shaded on the crown, the forehead round, the face plump, the cheeks ruddy, the eyes blue, the mouth and lips of a natural form resembling those of a man. The teeth I could not discover as the mouth was shut. The breasts and abdomen, the arms and forefingers of the size in which the hands were employed did not appear to be webbed, but as... To this, I am not positive. Wait, wait, wait. He was expecting webbed boobs? Yeah, I know. I uh, I, I, don't know if maybe he was I... He expecting the webbed hands. I think fingers, and I think just the way I read it, because I'm not used to this style of English and writing, that <laughs> I read it as if he meant webbed breasts and abdomen. Yes! <laughs> it remained on the rock three or four minutes after I observed it, and, uh, and was exercised during that period in combing its hair, which was long and thick, and of which it appeared proud, and then dropped into the sea, which was level with the abdomen, from whence it did not reappear to me. This is so hard for me to read. I had a distinct view of its features, being at no great distance on an eminence above the rock on which it was sitting, and the sun brightly shining. Okay, so it looks like a lady. Right, like it looks just like a chick well, say, in the what, water. Man teeth or something? No, said like the mouth of a natural form, like a man. But I yeah. don't think he means like like a man, like a male's mouth. I think he just means like man in general, like human uh, mouth, patriarchal man. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> know. <laughs> it's old Greg. He's just it's old Greg. It's old Greg. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm going to be done soon. Immediately before it's getting into its natural element, it seemed to have observed me as the eyes were directed towards the eminence on which I stood. It may be necessary to remark that previous to the period I beheld the object, I had heard it frequently reported by several persons, and some of them person whose veracity I never heard disputed. That they had seen such a phenomenon as I have described. Though, like, there's so many, like, unnecessary words. I'm sorry. Though then, Stupid like English. many other... <laughs> unnecessary words. We're efficient <laughs> in the modern era. Here, here in America, we just be like, I saw a damn fish person. Yeah, Busting their hair. And I wondered if I, could, if I could bang it. <laughs> Well, honestly, yeah. reading this, I feel like it's a, like a wet dream for him. I don't know. It just seems sort of erotic. I don't know. The webbed boobies kind of <laughs> kind of take a turn for the weird, if you ask me. <laughs> See, I think he's talking about the fingers, not the breasts. Yeah, me too. Okay, so like many others, I was not disposed to credit their testimony on the subject. I can say of a truth. That it was only by seeing the phenomenon I was perfectly convinced of its existence. Um, bloody blah. Okay, so uh, there's like a last paragraph, but we'll stop there. Okay, so that's w William Monroe's account. Okay. Um, so it sounded like a lot of people had already been reporting seeing mermaids on this particular coast of England. And it sounds like that beautiful siren archetype. It really sounded like he wanted to bang it. So. <laughs> have boobs at all. <clears throat> okay. And then one of the other sightings was more recent. It was um, in 1967. So actually like quite a few people saw this particular mermaid um, because it was on a ferry um in british columbia in canada so <clears throat> you know just going back to the whole the mm -hmm. whole idea of webbed boobs it just adds a whole new meaning to the to the expression motorboating <laughs> <Go on. laughs> taking a drink on that one also titty twister oh god i hate that phrase yeah it's pretty horrible 
but even more so when you add webbing. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to fin flap those things. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So this one um, is not a long one, right? Like I'm, it's 1967, a group of tourists see a mermaid um, yeah. while on a ferry in British Columbia, Canada, basically. So the witnesses said that it had long blonde hair and it was eating a salmon. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so I would have like put it just, just raw <laughs> and it's yeah, just face first injured. <laughs> that is exactly what I envisioned. Just tearing so, it apart. I followed the um, but it's aerial. link. Yeah, <laughs> just biting into a salmon. Um, so I followed the link that Molly provides in this article, um, and it links to the Times Colonist newspaper. Um so several witnesses said the mermaid had a large fish, apparently coho salmon. Like they were even identified the type of salmon. Uh, okay. And one swore she had taken a bite out of it. Um, that, so this was on June 13th, 1967. So long silver blonde hair and topless condition were generally agreed upon. Hey, um, he's topless, eh? And then a gentleman claims to have taken aerial photographs of her, but it didn't look like from this article that he actually had ever produced those. So, <laughs> um, yeah, aerial photographs of Ariel. Anyway, so, but that's that's a fairly recent one. That's 1967. Um, okay, so this next story is really different. So it comes out of Zimbabwe. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of sightings, I think around the Caribbean, like up to this day and, um, off, uh, some of the coasts on the African continent. Okay. And Zimbabwe, this story, uh, I got it from an article by, I'm going to mispronounce their name, Musa Mpofu from myzimbabwe.co.zw okay and it's it's really an update on this situation so oh i didn't open up the actual name of the article well i'll just go into it okay so in 1980 this girl this little eight-year-old girl roe of rutavo village uh was snatched up by a mermaid and dragged underwater where she lived for 40 years until her return. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yes. So the story goes, Roe was fishing with two relatives at the Rundi River. And like I said, 1980. All right. So one of the male relatives, uh, they didn't really identify their name or like say what kind of relative. It just said male relative. So the, the male relative <laughs> gave Roe a fish that they had caught and she dropped it on the ground. And so, and it got covered in sand. So she was trying to brush it off, but you know, obviously you're not going to get the sand off. So she decides to go back to the river to wash the, the sand off the fish. Yeah. Don't you just hate that when you're out on the beach, cleaning your fish, dusting it off and then boom. You're mermaided. <laughs> I hate that. Yes, I would hate that. I'd be like, <laughs> well, if I saw that happen for him, I'd be like, well, never going into the water ever again. <laughs> no, no. I'm leaving right now. <laughs> so she goes back to the river. And from what it sounds like, the relatives are, you know, they're not right with her, but they're not that far away either. So they're kind of standing a bit away and like waiting for her to come back. So they're the ones that claim a mermaid comes out of the water and drags her, snatches her up. Okay. She disappears wait, 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 without wait. a trace. So, so this group of guys sees this little girl on the beach, cleaning her fish, get grabbed up by a mermaid and drug underwater. And the response is like, let's hang out here and wait for her to come back. <laughs> well, they were, now. So it was a guy relative and then a female relative. And I don't remember what relation, right? But 
they were all about to leave when they handed her the fish. Okay. So when she dropped it and she wanted to rinse it off, she walked back to the river and they were kind of just standing and waiting. She gets snatched up and then they go like, they're like, oh shit. And they run to the river. Okay. They do go back for her. <laughs> they don't, oh. They're not just like deuces. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be quick. <laughs> Come on, hurry it up. Oh my gosh. No. Okay. So initially they thought it was actually a crocodile attack. Like that that's what they thought, but no, there was no blood. They didn't find any clothes. Um, authorities didn't find any clothes or remains either. So they thought felt like a crocodile attack was unlikely. They also said the water in that area wasn't even particularly deep and they didn't. So they, so they couldn't see her. They felt, I guess they felt like it wasn't so deep that if she had been dragged in by an, a crocodile that they wouldn't still see her, you know? Okay. So this is Roe's brother's words on this situation. Okay. After some years of losing both livestock and money in the search where we were told truths, half truths, and sometimes outright lies, a ray of hope flickered when an aunt met some women at Oredi near Zvishavane. Sorry if I've mispronounced that in a train. And they were talking of a similar incident. So kids getting snatched into rivers by mermaids is like. Oh, yeah. That just happened to me the other day. (laughs) A thing. You too? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So the women were saying there was a family whose daughter had been taken by a mermaid. And after they had, after they have done the rituals and went to the pool along Runde River, there were three girls who were released and the family was told to take theirs. They did. Okay. So I'll stop right there. So they're hearing this story on a train, right? That this family, their daughter was also taken in the same river by what they think are mermaids so they perform a ritual at the river and three little girls pop out of the river and so they take their their daughter they're allowed to take theirs okay so back to the brothers literal so words. i guess they ritualed a little too hard and got too many girls <laughs> yeah they got like, they got oh, three. Man, we just need the one and I'm then they threw the other two, two. <laughs> yeah okay sorry so... becky <laughs> so Back to the brother's words. So, but what caught the attention of my aunt is that among the three, there was Roe. And she is said to have told the gathered villagers that she is from Mwenezi, where where they're from, and to pass the message that she was alive before she and the other girl went back into the water. Okay. Okay. The incident was followed by a period of unusual quietness that somehow threatened our hope. We did not rest, however. And after some years, a young girl came saying she met Roe along Rundi River and instructed her to pass the message that she was alive. Okay, so now they've got that little girl like confirming the story that their aunt was told on a train. (laughs) That was... To be the case uh, where some messenger in the form of young girls would meet her and deliver the message, albeit after a number of years. So they had to wait several years before this person came and told them about Roe being one of the girls that was spit out of the river. Um, So we would go to the site where she would have been seen and perform rituals, but it was all in vain. My father later died and I also lost my two brothers. They all died without seeing her. It somehow energized me to look for her, bearing in mind that I was the only one remaining with my mother. I had to sell the little I had, even my house in Chiredzi, to raise money to pay those who were assisting. They were charging a lot, he said. Okay. Um, okay, so... Some wild shit's going down, right? Some little girls come out of nowhere. Like they hear the story on a train. Um, a little girl comes to their house, or a young girl comes to his house and then confirms, says, Yeah, I was sent by your sister to give you the message that she is alive and at the Rundi River. 
Um, okay. So now they're to the point where they're like, well, shit, now we got to do all these rituals. We got to get her back. So they start doing a series of rituals, which, um, included all night singing and drumming sessions near different areas of the river. Um, unfortunately, Roy did not appear after these rituals though. So, um, and I, I kind of summarized this part. So at one point, like around the time of the rituals, they're, they're, they're unsuccessful, but Roe's brother says that his, his own daughter gets ill in, in their town or whatever, and goes to the hospital. And so he's on the phone with her and someone overhears him on the phone saying he's not going to be able to be there with her until he gets his sister back. All right. So this woman that overhears him talking on the phone says, oh, hey, I know a woman who specializes in this sort of thing in Saka. Yeah. And Um, she could help you with your sister. I wonder how you become a mermaid specialist. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. Those are the old ways for sure. Okay. So back to Roy's brother's words okay so contacts were exchanged from where i visited the woman in zaka who in december 2020 came here with two others and led us to the same place where she had disappeared 40 years ago they did their ritual rituals and the river spat her out covered in reeds with some looking like they had grown on her body surprisingly she looked more youthful than her age um, cause remember this has been like 40 years, right? She was taken when she was eight. So she'd be damn near 50 by now. Um, but she looked youthful for her age. Time and aging seemed to have been parked during her stay, wherever she was. She looked like someone in her early twenties, but she was 49 in 2020 when she came out of the river. Okay. So that's Roe's story. So she spends 40 years in this water world and I could not find like, where they actually got to talk to her. So I don't know what this water will, I, I need a follow up. See, <laughs> That's I all know, I know. What, what, I, I need a follow up. <laughs> like, like I need a description. Like what, where, yes. what were you doing? What was it like? Did you have a job? I mean, a place, you know an what apartment. It, you know what it reminded me of was that, um, was it, no, it wasn't Aquaman. It was the second um, Black Panther movie. Neymar. I was thinking about yes. that. As you were talking about it, I was thinking about Neymar. Yeah. The, and his whole underwater yeah. city. That, yeah. That's what it reminds me of. So that, I just really like that story though. Um, I know I quote it a lot. So maybe what? that's not as fun when I do that. But I, I just wanted to read his words though. I, I also want her to explain <laughs> how did she mm. breathe underwater? Yeah, like, I don't I'm know. guessing they gave her the gift of the mermaids. <laughs> Maybe they <laughs> strapped a starfish over her face. I don't know. <laughs> Just a carp. We're going to turn you into a SpongeBob character, but it's going to be fine. You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be looking for follow ups for to like, I want to hear her story uh, from her. But all right, so that's her way. And these claims were corroborated by the chief of that village, Chief Nagari, and the village head, Isaac Moyo. So it's, you know, got two higher level individuals backing him on his claims here. Okay, so the last bit, I just pulled a couple comments from Reddit that I saw about mermaid sightings. Um yeah, Reddit comments. Yeah, Reddit comments. And this is from Cornholio69660. Oh my god. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> that one's got layers. <laughs> I love Reddit because like it's such a beautiful display of human creativity. <laughs> okay, so Cornholio, he he actually left a comment on someone's post where they were basically asking about people's mermaid sightings. Okay. So this guy's comment was this. Uh, I'm living in the Caribbean as well in Utila, Honduras. 
Once I was in Neptune's, one of the most virgin beaches here, and I was just swimming, not even diving or doing snorkel. And I felt a hand pulling me and I have long hair to my shoulders. I'm six, five. So it started, it started pulling my hair. Obviously nope. I, pan- yeah, <laughs> obviously I panicked and started screaming. And, uh, two of my friends were looking at me like WTF is going on. So I got to the dock and then I see, a uh, remora. And they have a soft tissue that makes suction. And that's how they cling to sharks and whales. So like, a, I guess like a type of fish. Um, but I've never encountered a fish that pulls down and it's swimming near the deck when I got off of it. My friend is a dive dive instructor, huh? Oh, I'm just going to say, so to, to, to add to our fan art contest, we need some <laughs> Cornholio getting drugged down by mermaids. We'll have to pay Cornholio some royalties or whatever for that. <laughs> um, You're gonna pay Mike Judge because it's like it's Beavis and Butthead. It's, <laughs> I want to see. I want to see Beavis getting pulled down by mermaids and be like, "I am Cornholio." <laughs> oh, that that's actually perfect. Okay, so my friend is a dive instructor, and she got into the water. The remora never got close to her, and it touched it touched my legs, arms. It pulled my hair. That was like a month ago. And still, and still living in an island, I'm a and little. She didn't even buy frightened. me dinner. No, yeah, she didn't even buy me dinner. I'm a little frightened to go into the sea. So my friend, who's an instructor for diving, vouches for my mermaid story because she told me she felt threatened by something she didn't know. I believe in them, honestly. Hold on, I hold. On. I want to look up that remora. They butthead would be up on the dock, be like, "Ha, oh, going thorbice with a." With a mermaid. Oh. <laughs> I'd love to get felt up by Ariel. <laughs> okay, so this doesn't look like a mermaid. Okay, so you'd probably know the difference. I can share my screen and show you if you want to see it. Yeah. She's if sharing her screen remember. with us listeners. I bet you wish you could see. Well, you can if you watch us on YouTube. That's right. But we'll post pictures on Instagram. I need to be making notes of all the pictures I need to post on Instagram. Okay. Do you see the Remora, the pictures? Yeah, it's a fish. It's a fish. It looks like it, it got does... stepped on. Yeah, it doesn't look like a mermaid at all. So No. <laughs> so I think you, you would, would know. You would not confuse that with Daryl Hannah. No. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. Oh, where'd my notes go? You don't. Okay, so I'll just make up the accounts myself. All right, so that was Cornholio's. Um, Thank you, Cornholio. Yes, thank you, Cornholio. Okay, so. Okay, the next one is from Old Supermarket 5657. Um, Again, in response to someone's question about their sightings or you know or if they believe right so um i'd like to add mines in 2021 i was in montego bay jamaica and i was sitting on the beach alone during a silent lightning storm at night and all of a sudden i felt this intense urge to run into the water mind you i don't swim after a while the urge intensified and i stupidly went to my put my feet in the water I remember the water was bubbling and it was pitch black and I immediately felt this sense of dread and danger and ran out of the water. After getting out, I went back to sit down on my folding chair and out of nowhere, a bolt of lightning lit up the sky and the sea and I saw a big black figure with long hair. Yeah. (laughs) Who wants a body massage? (laughs) Not too far away from me staring at me from the water. After the lightning was gone, the figure was nowhere to be found. I sat out there for a half, a half an hour after trying to figure out what I saw. Hold on. Figure out what, if what I saw was, hold on, hold on, the, the wording. Figure out what I saw, but it never reappeared or never appeared again. Okay, so I adjusted uh, old supermarkets words. Sorry, but. Um, I really believe it was a mermaid trying to take me out into the sea. I also thought when I read that, like Poseidon, he's like, 
you need to feed the ocean. <laughs> I don't know, like your <laughs> human sacrifice <laughs> to Poseidon is nice. luring you in. That seems to track. <laughs> He's just out there and just like body massage. <laughs> body yeah. massage. This one is from Zebu Daya. Yes, mermaids are real. Starting out strong. But because many people are skeptical about it, I choose not to discuss my encounter. I was 13 years old and it was not a pleasant encounter. I ended up in the hospital emergency room and have the scars to prove it. Mermaids do not exist only in the sea. I believe they do exist in any body body of water. It can be a dam or a pond. I don't know why. Yeah, you're sick. Oh, no. (laughs) Your bathtub. (laughs) Hey, I'm just going to. I'm going to go hunt crawdads down by the creek. Hey, there's a naked lady down there. She got (laughs) pins. So many country boys were taken. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Mermaids, you know, okay. Um. I don't know why I had the encounter. I was with my sister and I was the only person that saw them and tried to draw her attention to them. There were three of them. I was on top of a tree by a pond in a secluded area. When I saw them, I fell down from the tree when I had the encounter and ended up in the hospital emergency room. So Zabu I saw three of them and wait, what was it? A pond? Yeah. A pond um let's see let's see let's see okay that's that's a kooky one that maybe i'll come back to later or share separately <laughs> uh not kooky as in like crazy but like woo woo. it's kind of oh. woo woo <laughs> yeah not like bad or anything um okay so the next one is by transsensory boy um and he posted this question so hi guys i'm new to the sub and i just wanted to share my experience and ask if anyone else has had any sightings of aquatic hominids aka mermaids aquatic ape theory is the often academically maligned theory that at some point in our evolutionary past we had a semi-aquatic phase this is theorized due to us being the only ape species with consistently Velus hair, V E L U S. How do you, no Velus? Idea. Velus? Velus? No, idea. Um, it was also paired with a hot topic phase. That's, that's, <laughs> that's so weird. Uh, babies being able to instinctively block their nasal passage when underwater prior to age two, and our general shape being conducive to swimming. This is a theory I wholeheartedly believe, and I truly believe that there was an evolutionary split during the stage that caused a hominid species to evolve into a near fully aquatic phenotype. Wait, 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 wait. So he's saying babies are naturally shaped to swim. They're basically potatoes. Yes. <laughs> human are human bodies. The babies, they when you put Just them toss in water, a potato to the water. They won't breathe in the water. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Throw a potato in the water. Watch it swim. It's Babies can birth. though. Babies can swim though. Like if you see like a home birth, they'll kind of yeah. naturally start. They're little swimming right? potatoes. Yeah, they're swimming potatoes. Okay, so transsensory. What was the same? Transsensory boy goes on to say, the reason is when I was a kid and we were holidaying at Whitby, North UK, I truly think I saw one. I remember it very vividly. It was late evening. Sun was going down and we were walking along the, along the beach as the tide was coming in, going towards a slanted cobbled section that went alongside the pier. We walked out to the lighthouse and right out to the end of right out to end of the pier where the older gentleman would fish and about half a mile out it was just bobbing up and down in the waves from what i could make out it was light it was light gray skinned like a dolphin flattened human like head but big eyes kind of like a seal my mom was convinced it was just a seal but then it went under the waves before breaching and diving back in It had long arms like a human, but the tail was like a dolphin's, but with rounder flukes. Um, So 
that's pretty much the gist of his post. Um, I think that description is really interesting. So if you guys like mermaids, go listen to the spooked podcast, their creature feature part two, um, because there is a really creepy encounter with a mermaid and he describes it in a very similar way to this individual's uh, description with like the big seal, like huge uh, saucer type eyes. Okay. Last one, last one promise. (laughs) Uh, so this one is from let let a tried 37. So they're responding to transsensory boys post here. Okay. This sounds fucking insane, but I've told this story here before. Uh, let me skip a little bit. Okay. So what I saw didn't look like the little mermaid, more like the creature from the black lagoon minus the large gills. I saw a humanoid breach the water in the ocean and a sunset cruise in Florida. It had dark green, slimy, thick skin with shoulders and a human-shaped head. Could see the fucking whites in its eyes. <laughs> no other animal around there looks anything close. Reality is much stranger than we have discovered yet. It looked like a human doing the breaststroke, popping up out of nowhere. We were only like 10 feet away from it. It was actively looking for wildlife, or I was actively looking for wildlife, dolphins, stingrays, manatees um shark but this was something else i can still see it in my head but it's hard to describe facial features it all happened so fast because we were in a boat going fairly fast it popped up right off the starboard side and was gone again within two seconds at most i think it went back under the water but we were going towards the sunset and this thing seemed to be going the other way towards the shore if that doesn't sound like old greg I don't know what it does. <laughs> I just right? I just wanted her to be like, and at this point it said it hopped up and asked, What are you doing in my water's mother liquor? <laughs> Have you ever drink Bailey's from an old shoe? I'm old. Frick. <laughs> so those are some mermaid sightings. What do you guys think about mermaids? Yeah, I nay. think I'm here for it. They're absolutely <laughs> real, and we're just waiting for the debut of their metal album i mean yeah, it just depends definitely. on what version of mermaid i get out of these stories the metal I one mean, i mean i don't i mean you know if it's like hot daryl hannah being like hey come back with me to my mermaid world and be like bye guys i'm not gonna probably be into the one that has like the seal eyes you know <laughs> Like just like or those uh, spikes. Yeah. You'll, you'll get little, the carpet. You'll, yeah. You just suck your face off. <laughs> yeah. Um, I definitely am not crazy of the idea of being just snatched. Like, like, what's the point? Like, why are they taking kids? Like, I want to know what's behind that. Like, apparently they're taking kids. Like, that's they don't seem to take adults, just kids. Mainly it sounds like just girls. Yeah. I, I think the takeaway from this episode is, you know, the water is a terrible, deeply cosmic, horrifying place, and mm-hmm. we should avoid it at all costs. Yeah, what well, we we don't know that we only explored like what five percent <laughs> of it or something. Like we don't know shit about so it. Better stop all over your head. Yeah, and so the river one. Gods. The river one. Not only did it remind me of the second Blank Panther movie, but like it it really does like remind me of um, like, is it Irish mythology where the, they are in rivers a lot of the times and will just drag people in and kill them, drown them. I don't know. Just kind of generally being menaces <laughs> to humans. So they're not really a threat. They're just kind of dicks. Well, they are a threat because they can kill you. I mean, I mean, I think it's it is Irish mythology where they're like scary. Well, those and, are Irish and I mean, of course they are. But Greek mythology, Greek mythology is the same way, though, right? Like in the Odyssey, the sirens are calling you to wreck ships. So just, just avoid all manner of European mermaids. <laughs> they're up to no good. Up to shenanigans. Now, it's the Icelandic ones you have to be careful with, because at first you might think, you know, it's some hot girl, but it's actually just Lars Ariel. 
and he's he's got his long flowing locks of blonde hair and he's like the lead guitarist of the death metal band and he does the gargle burp yes (laughs) um okay well that's that on mermaid sightings so all righty well hey thank you christina mermaids hey if you've got a story to share or if you've seen a mermaid or you are a mermaid mermaid to share especially if you are a mermaid we really want to hear from you then Mm -hmm. yeah we want to talk to you we want to pick your brain not physically like you know like we just want to we have questions we don't want to we don't want to pick your brain we especially don't want to do it for for science trust us we we would never do that (laughs) Trust we want. Us, we okay. just. We, we, we just like a good story. Just we just with your defenses down, um, expecting nothing but safety. I'm not trusting him now. Wait, he's. I know he, that doesn't sound safe. Nothing <laughs> terrible will happen to you at all. You can absolutely trust me. I will not come, harm thee. Come into my basement. <laughs> Put on these chains. <laughs> It's all part of the interview process. <laughs> For science. It puts the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. All righty. So, well, cool. So, yeah. Go ahead, Christina. You can send us money on Patreon. <laughs> I love money. We like money. Money's good. And, and when you subscribe, you get access to our Discord. So you can, you know, talk to us but also there are some people on there we can talk about the episodes just come hang out with us yeah i think james and chris play games yeah come talk to strangers and yeah. us <laughs> and uh we will be doing another live stream fairly soon as well uh we're getting that uh finalized and ready and once we have a date we will let you know so follow us on social media so you'll get the update. Yes. Facebook, Little Podcast of Horrors. Instagram, Little Podcast Horrors. Uh, TikTok, Little Podcast Horrors. I don't know. All of those. Or yeah, little. just look for Little Podcast of Horrors everywhere. We are everywhere. And if you liked this episode, please like it, share it, send it to your friends. You gotta be like, guys, listen to this podcast the greatest podcast changed ever my life it's changed my life about mermaids man it's just christina reading <laughs> the whole time freaking mermaids <laughs> and with that we'll see you next time so you know unless you get you know, unless you get drugged into the sea by a mermaid then yeah we won't not. catch you next time i mean maybe they get podcasts in the sea i don't know 